the projects we're involved with have very large goals, whether it's sustainable bioenergy or human systems biology that allows us to understand disease. We've been dreaming about solving these sorts of problems for, for years, and it's one of the main reasons we're at Oak Ridge is this combination of big compute and big data. Tensor cores on the GPUs on Summit will give us this enormous boost in performance to solve fundamental biological problems we simply couldn't before. We really want to understand how life works at a molecular level how all the components in a cell are, are interacting. And so we do a lot of studies at population scale. So we have different layers of data, whether it's genomics data or protein or metabolite expression data. If we understand all of those interactions, we can start to associate them within the context of other genes and other molecules and what they're doing. And one of our first projects we're focusing on for that is opioids addiction. Only 10% of people who are prescribed opioids go on to full-blown addiction. The fact that only 10% do become addicted means there's probably a complex underlying genetic architecture that gives them a propensity towards addiction. When we look at a population of genomes, tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions, we can look for variations in those genomes, so mutations. If proteins or genes are involved in a common function, um, a mutation in one becomes a selective pressure for a compensatory mutation in the other, of coevolutionary signature. You can look for those changes across the entire population, and the coevolution algorithms are looking for correlations between those changes. We save those as a network. Then you can start creating sets. Once you have created those sets, you can test them against a population who have been exposed to opioids and have gone on to develop addiction in a control group, where people who have been exposed to opioids have not gone on to develop addictions. And what you're trying to find are groups of, of mutations strongly correlated with addiction, but tend not to appear in the control group. And we're trying to do that across the entire genome for all possible variants in a population. The very first calculation you have to do is on the order of 10 to the 16th comparisons. And then you probably want to do that thousands or, or possibly even hundreds of thousands of times. So the number of calculations you have to do is very, very high. And so we'll be using Summit to run the Comet code, which give us these coevolutionary patterns and explainable AI approaches, specifically iterative random forests and a new version of that we're building called Tensor Iterative Random Forest. We've been able to test some of these applications and the early science programs within SEMA. And we started out at 1.8 exaflops. We're now up, up to 2.36 exaflops. That's a 500 petaflop increase in incremental performance on our own algorithm. This is the first application at exascale. So the first time that's ever been done in the world. Tensor cores are incredibly efficient on these mixed precision calculations, and so they give us this huge boost in performance, and we can start to do that population level study. Once we understand the complex genetic architecture underlying addiction, we want to do this really for all clinical disease states that seem to have some sort of genetic underpinnings. Alzheimer's and dementia is, is certainly high on our list prostate cancer, cardiovascular disease, and it's machines like Summit that give us the ability to do that at scale. So we can now start to answer scientific questions that were literally impossible earlier this year.